A few years ago, I bought my daughter an Instax Mini 8 camera. I don't recall exactly why I bought it. Could have been a birthday present or Christmas present. But it was probably just a part of me raising a kid where you need to use things like, you know, extortion, torture, negotiation and bribery to get what you want. She never really used it. I don't think I ever saw her taking one single picture with this one and I wasn't interested in this either. Um, this was really more like a fashion statement, I, I think, back in the days. It's a very basic, ugly looking camera and, and you can't do much with it. Now, totally unrelated, I'm hosting this um, podcast on film photography. Uh, unfortunately, it is in Finnish, so some of you may not understand everything I say there. And I'm uh, hosting it together with a good friend of mine, Mikko Lehtonen. Now, a few episodes ago, he started to talk about Instax. And he started to talk about, especially about Instax film, and how much he likes the look of this film. So he actually pushed me to this track that I'm on right now. And this really is a nice film. It has a dreamy look. It's almost like an oil painting. You know, reminds me of Mona Lisa, really. Uh, so the camera is crappy, but the film is nice. So somehow you need to be able to use the film without the camera. Instax film is packed into cartridges. And these cartridges go within the camera. So you really never need to touch the film if you are using one of those cameras. Uh, but I did it differently. So in a total darkness I took one of these Instax cartridges and carefully pressing underneath I pushed out the dark slide. There's a dark slide that prevents the light to go in and took out the dark slide. Now, if you now expose this to the light, then the film is ruined, so you need to do this in a total darkness. Then, by pressing back here, I carefully pushed the first film sheet out, like this. And then I put this open cartridge in the camera, so that uh, it won't get exposed to the light. Now I'm still in the total darkness. I then <coughs> took my Rolleicord camera. Now why Rolleicord? Now it has a very nice lens. I can control the aperture and speed unlike in an Instax camera. So I put the film here, close the lid and had one sheet of unexposed Instax film now within my Rolleicord camera. I then measured the light, composed my picture like with, with anything else and took one frame. Then after taking the picture I went back to the dark room and now in total darkness I opened my Rolleicord again took the film out carefully, negotiated it back to the cartridge. So you need to push it a little bit like this. And push it inside the cartridge. Then I open the camera, put the cartridge into this camera, in total darkness, close the lid. Now I can turn on the light. I then got the camera ready, put a black cloth in front of the lens and press the shutter. Now the camera takes the picture, but because I'm covering the lens it's actually not taking a picture. It's just pushing the film sheet out and exposes the development chemicals to the film. Like, you know, any Polaroid or Instax film would do. Then I'm just waiting for picture to start to appear and I have a picture in my hand. Now very interesting, but there is an obvious problem with this. 
with a Rolex cord or any medium format camera even though I get a nice lens I can only take one picture at a time and then I need to go to the dark room and, and do all the hassle so say I want to go uh, to a road trip and I want to take uh, say 10 sheets of Instax film with me I, I would need 10 Rolex cords and uh, yeah, I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. There gotta be a better way than buying 10 Rolex cords. And the idea was to use my 4x5 large format camera with Instax film. So I uh, found an old exposed sheet film like this. And then I placed an exposed uh, Instax film in the middle of the in the middle of the you know regular film and then cut the corners so that now I can push this Instax film like this and this old exposed 4 times 5 film keeps this whole thing together this is like you know, this of course needs to happen in total darkness, but you know, anyways, I'm, I mean, you can cut the corners in a daylight, but then when you deal with an unexposed film, then you gotta do this in darkness. So now, I can go into my dark room, create, you know, um, a combination like this, put this inside of my 4 times 5 large format film holder, and close the lid. Now I can take as many of these with me as I have these holders. I got probably 20. So now they each hold two. So I could take 40 in stock sheets with me and go into the woods and this also has an additional benefit that I can put this into any four times five large format camera of my choosing. So a lot of flexibility. I also did a little bit measurement and measured where the picture is in the middle of the sheet and put the little dots into the ground glass of my 4x5 camera. So now I can take Instax pictures with my Graflex. Pretty cool, huh? Who would have thought? So then I thought, let's make a little project with these toys. You know, Instax film is ASA 800, so it is really nice for indoor shooting. Our kitchen has a window that is facing north, so the light that comes through that window is really pretty. So the dreamy, oil paintingly look of the film and the kitchen, that's a nice place to go and try this. So I created this small series, let's call it um, a cup of coffee and an apple series. It looks like this. the result actually. Uh, it's something different now. I haven't been able to shoot anything like this before and the complexity of the whole process forces me to think ahead so pretty neat. And in addition to those pictures that I showed you I wanted to do a few more experiments. Uh, first I of course wanted to shoot a selfie because I mean this is a teenage camera and this is a teenage film and I'm a teenager so selfies are the things we teenagers do. But the problem with this picture is that the model is Barakli. 
Uh, then I wanted to see how the film looks in uh, during the night time in an artificial lightning and it turns nicely yellow so that's okay and then finally I mean I had one more picture left and I thought what is the craziest thing I could think of doing with this thing so so since I have a four times five mm, picture holder I of course wanted to use my pinhole camera and I put the last sheet into my pinhole camera and continuing the theme of a cup of coffee and an apple uh, I took this picture with a pinhole camera now the exposure of this picture was uh, 35 seconds so it starts to turn blue which is not bad at all When you do things like this, your cameras and the film becomes more than just a gear. Uh, they become your co-creators. There's no way I would have taken these kind of pictures without an Instax film, a couple of vintage cameras, uh, raising a kit, and then my fellow co-host who originally pushed me to this madness. Thanks Mikko.